What's up, everybody? I did not think I was live. It says I've been live for 35 seconds. Did you see me fixing my camera? What's up, everybody? There must be some sort of lag on the video. Let me know if that is the case or if you can hear me okay. I just think that I started the live, but I can see that we've got Brian and Frank and Michael in here. What's up, everybody? Um, drop a comment if you can hear me okay, if everything's going fine so far, because that alarms me a little bit that there seemed to have been a lag. Daniel T is in the house. What's up, my man? Please let me know if the audio and video sounds okay. Before we get into this super fun occasion, I'm going to open some birthday bourbon given to me by a friend. Uh, this is a bourbon that I drank on stream before. This is the Heaven Hill Bottled in Bond. This is a seven-year, uh, 100 proof bourbon that is just fantastic. Not the easiest to find these days, but um, very good. If you can find it, I do recommend it. So we have a fun occasion tonight that I have not really done before but has been recommended to be to me by a number of people, including Daniel T, who is um, our moderator, typically speaking. Uh, I don't know that I see necessarily that he is the moderator. I'm in StreamYard right now. Uh, but regardless, Daniel proposed the idea uh, to go on a little shopping spree and for him to give me a budget to go ahead and spend the money on his behalf, or rather fill a cart on his behalf with some of my recommendations for him to then be able to pull the trigger um, after tonight's stream, maybe make an adjustment or two uh, if need be. So here are the rough parameters of uh, tonight's shopping spree. As far as I understand, Daniel uh, is giving me about a hundred dollar budget. This is going to be on discounttackle.com. So I'm going to log in in a second here. Uh, using Daniel's credentials, um, you guys won't be able to see, of course, but then we are going to load up the cart with, mm, we'll see, 10 to 15 baits, uh, depending on what we can squeeze in there budget-wise. This will be primarily hard baits, um, mostly crankbaits and jerkbaits, but we shall see. Maybe a couple soft plastics in there, but Brendan has given me a, a, a rough uh, script to go off of in terms of uh you know the the waters that he fishes and the types of lures that he's looking for but has given me more or less free reign to pick stuff out for him or recommend it and the tricky thing about this is that daniel has been watching for a long time and uh very well might already have some of these things so i am going to intentionally overload the cart a little bit and probably put a 120 bucks worth of stuff in here, um, unless Daniel says otherwise. And by all means, Daniel, um, if I pick a bait that you have already got in your box or have already purchased because I recommended it before, then tell me and press stop, and uh, and we will go back and I'll pick a different one for you. But cheers, everybody! I do have a couple of new baits to show you guys um because i went to shields with my my kids today and uh i didn't spend very much money but i i did get uh five things six things one of them i don't have with me uh, the one i don't have with me is one of the uh carolina pre-rigs made by six cents just kind of curious about that uh, Shields had recently gotten in a ton of stuff uh, from Six Cents, and so I picked up a couple of their baits. The only soft plastic I got that I allowed my son to help me pick out was the Juggle Minnow. This is a bait that I had never seen in person. You know, you just see pictures of it online. It looks like a ton of other baits on the market, but when you hold it, um, you're really able to tell what makes it different okay and so first of all is just how soft this soft plastic is 
Um, I was pleasantly surprised by that. I'm not going to be able to keep this tail straight for you, but um, very thin tail, very soft plastic, and this color is wicked. Uh, they call it 4K Sunfish. And so you'll notice a lot of the same flake and general colors that I recommended and showed you guys in the Zoom color called uh, Sun Gill the other night. That is one of my, not secret colors, but one of my confidence colors. And so I decided to, to try this bait after holding it in my hand and seeing what it is. For five bucks a pack, I, I kind of had to. The other thing that they had of six cents that uh, I had not tried, but was interesting to see in person was this guy right here. And this is the flat sided um, six cents finesse flat four f4 i forget what they call it um i thought it was going to be smaller than it is um in profile but i will say compared to the original flat 75 x this bait is a lot more of a traditional flat sided crankbait in its profile how narrow it is in general as well as that circuit board lip on there. So I'm pretty excited about these guys. This is, I forget what bluegill they call this, but uh, that was a color that I kind of recently fell in love with due to its uh, color changing abilities in the light, as is this one. Uh, 4K Shad looks very unassuming until you get it in the right light conditions, which this is way too harsh here, but I'll say in very bright sun, you get a chartreuse and purple hit on the underside of this bait, and it is super sexy. So uh, I was just staring at this bait on the drive home from Shields. Other two things I got that I almost thought I would never get these um, is the Mega Bass Uoze Swimmer. This is their swim jig with an underspin built into it. So. Um, I will say I had been skeptical about this thing for so long, but I am curious enough to try it. You know, this is really well built. I got these both in the three eighths ounce, but it's, it's more sturdy than I would have thought. You know, the weed guard looks very unassuming and yet it is pretty beefy and yet, um, and it's got a very unique <laughs> bait keeper like homemade bait keeper on here take a look at all of the different like arms on this thing uh to grab soft plastic so uh that gives me ideas about how to tie my own bait keepers using say uh, i'd need much heavier line uh like 50 or 100 pound line but pretty cool um so a couple of those, one in a shad pattern and one in a black and blue pattern. These are expensive, overpriced swim jigs in my opinion, but uh, really well built. I think they will balance really well and uh, in certain situations could be the ticket. So I'm at least opening my mind uh, to those for this season. Um, I've heard mixed things and seen mixed things, so we'll see. Um, yeah, see, Michael says very fragile wire, and Brendan says those things are awesome. So I will report back once I've had a chance to try them out. So, boom, got those out of the way. We're nine minutes in, and we're going to log into Discount Tackle and get this shopping spree underway because I'll say I'm a little uh, I'm a little nervous to spend Daniel's money like that, but. Uh, see, JP, I felt the same way, right? Uh, of course, it's going to break off eventually, but I still think the balance of this head is going to be rock solid. Even after this breaks off, it's going to be a very good swim jig. But um, for the price, you know, at 11 or 12 bucks, it is expensive. So, you know, that's why I more recently have just been kind of stocking up on evergreen grass rippers as my primary swim jigs um uh, for this season so we'll see um 
I went in with a little bit of an open mind there. I also want to show you guys something else. I don't know what you guys think about this. Super weird. Um, but I've decided to paint some of the blades on some of my chatter baits. And uh, I have no idea <laughs> how that's going to go, right? Like, this is the Minimax blade. And I'm just fiddling around seeing, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Tell me if that's stupid. Um, okay. Let's go on to discount tackle. Get Daniel's login. Should I just read it aloud? Um, I'll tell you all what Daniel's temporary login is. Just kidding. Oh, it's weird not having my login uh, since it's automatically saved here. I don't love that, Daniel. But I'm kidding. All right, we're logging in. And I'm going to share the screen in just one second. All right. Wow. I'm glad I didn't save yet because it does have uh, Daniel's address saved in here. Okay. And let's get back to Sharon. And I apologize. I'm not going to be able to address these comments uh, like on a real time basis, but um, I will try my best to hop back and forth so that we can have a little bit of a conversation because I also do want some feedback from Daniel in real time to a certain extent. Uh, Daniel says, I look at this as a chance to get good vapes that my that maybe I wouldn't have picked out myself. That's the idea, right? Um, so if I pick out baits that you've already got or that you uh, already would pick out yourself, let me know, okay? Yeah, Brendan, that's what I was thinking. I've, I've got some, so that's what I'm going to slap on there. Um, uh, we'll see. Yeah. I mean, that's what I was thinking. Just kind of fool around a little bit, you know? Okay. Present share screen. And, uh, we're about to get rolling guys. I want to make sure this is the right window. Pretty sure it is. Okay. All right. Yep. Shoot. Hope you guys didn't see much of that, but yes, we are in, in his account. And let's go, Daniel. So guys, first thing that Daniel wanted, and the only thing that he uh, said he absolutely does want let's see if i can make this a little bit better is that a better view i don't need to be big right okay evergreen we already talked about the grass ripper i mean i i'm a fan of most of these baits right here okay um but there was one in particular that he mentioned uh, that I recently picked up and I'm very excited to try out because this is a hybrid style bait, as you can see, given the name. Um, this is the X over five crossover hybrid jerk bait crank bait. OK, so this is a relatively big bodied bait um, at almost four inches long and uh Weighs five eighths of an ounce, so very, very castable. Only dives to about three feet, but is um, a very unique bait. Actually, comes with three treble hooks on it, so super cool. But is the kind of bait that will suspend when you kill it. Um, it will have a solid side to side action 
um, on a standard jerkbait style retrieve, but will perform uh, perform really well on a straight retrieve, even while burning it. So um, only comes in five colors right now. I personally have the Flash Hasu and the Bluegill Chartreuse Belly. Daniel did give a little bit of information, letting us know that um, in his personal bodies of water, he is fishing deeper bodies of water and clearer water. So, um, you know, he said, that said, he's still fishing shallow to deep. So it's not like these need to be deep diving baits. Um, and that might help motivate him a little bit uh, to throw some baits that maybe he ordinarily wouldn't. He also said there are, are no perch. Uh, and really, it is shad dominated. So I got to say, uh, these three options right here are going to be dynamite. But if we're looking for a do everything type of situation, let me see if we do have a little bit of flash on this guy. Um, this ghost thread fin might be the ticket. Um, I think you'll be blown away by the paint jobs on any of the evergreen baits. So we're going to go with the ghost thread fin shad on that one and uh, feel good about it for now. All right. <laughs> Grab him a Roman maid and be done with it, says Brennan. Uh, yeah, not going to do that. But Adam, I don't think. Uh... <laughs> That's funny. JP, they do not. No. All right, so let's move on to bait number two because that, that choice was a little bit easier than the rest, right? Evergreen might make its way back, but um, first, we're going to do things a little different than I normally would. Um, I am frequently using new arrivals, and uh, I can't believe we – I don't think we even used – uh, my affiliate link. Did we guys? That's bad news bears. Uh, or just embarrassing rather. We can we can fix that though, right? Do a little copy and a little paste. All right. So just reload. We're good. Okay. Um, now you'll notice that there are sales going on Z man, 20% off right now. Um, and some of their stuff will be on clearance. I like to look at new arrivals. Adam Odin might probably already have those. Um, now what we're going to do instead is go into categories because this is a, a big part of what was recommended tonight. And we're going to go into jerk baits first because I think this is a more important topic of conversation. Um, Adam had mentioned jerk baits, crank baits, and square bills, um, and that obviously that is a super broad three categories. And he said shallow and deep. So I have um, a few things specifically in mind, and we're going to start loading the cart with those baits first and um, see what Daniel has to say. Keep in mind, we are trying to work with a $100 budget, so I am not going to be just throwing in a bunch of $10 and $20 baits uh, every time. But <laughs> uh, Yeah, I'm a brunette guy. Sorry, Caro. Uh, my sister's a blonde. Uh, I have nothing against blondes, but just not my style. All right. I did date one or two, but didn't last long. Okay. So in the jerkbait category, look, we've got how many different baits are listed here. Uh, we've only got three pages. Okay. So we can work through this. Uh, not the craziest, but I do want to find one or two specific baits quickly. This one might come back into play if you want a deep diving jerkbait as might this guy 
but we're on first is this bait right here. I talk about it pretty frequently. This is one of the most underrated high quality jerk baits, in my opinion, um, out on the market, just period. This is the dual hardcore minnow flat. And they make this in four different sizes. And, you know, so these skews here are the 70 and the 95. And then they also make a 110 and a 130. The reason I'm going here is that in my opinion, the 95, which is just shy of four inches long, weighs seven sixteenths of an ounce and has three treble hooks. Okay. This is a killer bait. looking for here I'm tripping with my internet tonight uh, you guys said I would but I don't want to upset the stream here so what we're gonna do is I've got two of my favorite colors I'm just going to add one and it is the ghost pro blue you are fishing clear water this is um you know a classic color that works for everybody across the country but their version of pro blue is excellent okay it is super transparent and has a lot of that flash built into uh you know the i think it's the inner core of uh the plastic but most important thing here is the magnetic weight transfer system that is patented um by dual hardcore yozuri doesn't have it but dual hardcore does and that is what makes this bait in particular unique so that ghost pro blue in the 95 size uh is a must-have in my opinion now i'm gonna jump back and see if daniel mentioned on that lagging a little okay so i am not gonna stream anything Rich, who do you think I am? You think I reset my router before my live streams, dude? I'm I switch computers every other live stream, you know? I'm working on my old laptop right now that hasn't been woken up in over a week. So, yeah, that's uh that's the reason we're having issues right now is that this computer is just borderline overloaded. So, I'm not going to play videos unfortunately you won't be able to see underwater footage and things like that but oh well so um you know we could of course go with you know a cheaper bait like the whipper snapper from 13 fishing uh, this is an interesting bait because it is affordable it is effective and it's relatively deep diving for what it is um or i guess they make a shallow and a deep the deep goes five to nine feet and that's cool What's not cool is that these are like all sold out. Forget it. Uh, the whippersnapper was not one that I was going to throw in your cart anyway, Daniel. So let's forget about that. Uh, the only two others that really I was seriously considering, um, and we, we looked at them already, uh, or I popped them into new tabs, are the Strike King 300. You know, they make it in a, a standard and a deep diving, but they dive deep as they are. Um, I want to say the standard 300 dives to like eight feet and this deep diver goes to 11 feet. So um, it not remarkably heavy, but they cast well. They've got a standard weight transfer system and they've got a consistent action. So um, I generally think pretty good things about kvd baits so um you know this one in say the oyster um i do like this pro black that's not a good photo of it all of these pro colors are pretty sick pro bone i think i might even like that better than the oyster which i didn't think was going to happen but uh Pro Green. These are all great options for you if you were interested in that bait. But this is a deep diver. Um, I don't even. Maybe I've got one or two of them. That's the like the deepest diving jerk bait uh, that I own. So that's the only reason I kind of mentioned that one. Um, 
The other one was the Yozuri deep diving jerk bait. And I mentioned that one because it comes in some good internal prism finishes. It's relatively cheap, um, just like you get with the dual hardcore. So uh, the here's one that I think if you don't already have, might need to add to the mix. uh color patterns perhaps not my favorite available right now but this is the lightning pointer from lucky craft in the 110 and this has a thinner to get out of the standard um pointer 100 um this is a three hook jerk bait um and it dives a little bit deeper it goes five to six feet and it's got a little bit more erratic of an action. So uh, where you'd probably get a slightly more refined action out of that dual hardcore uh, flat minnow 95, this lightning pointer 110 uh, would be quite a bit more erratic. So I'd probably, if I were you, get it in this pearl threadfin shad, uh, unless your, your fish do hit chartreuse. Um, you didn't really tell me if you got um you know actually the more erratic action will go aurora black i'm not even sure we'll leave that in the cart but we're flying right now um i want to move on beyond jerk baits in just a second so um trying to keep things ooh i i always forget what's the difference between the 110 and the 98 with the lightning pointer. Okay, the 98 is just a two hook bait. Um, that's why I prefer the 110. And now I'm moving too fast. All right, let me try and catch up with a comment or two. We got Jermaine in the house. What's up, dude? Daniel says, I would rather go with quality than um and go over a hundred dollars yeah well i'm not going with low quality that 13 fishing was kind of flirting with that so apologize this is the feedback that i want though dude like if i'm picking baits that you think you're not going to be excited about having or have enough confidence to throw then do not let me choose them for you all right <laughs> that is not true um, there will be no Senkos going in here. All right. Hey, Adam, appreciate the feedback because that's what we threw in the cart, dude. Woo -woo. Michael, you get out of here. Have a great rest of your night, dude. Uh, it is Sunday night. So I, I understand if, and when you guys need to get out of here, totally understand. Um, Jermaine demands a, a six X six cents bait. Yeah. Well, we were talking about six cents before Jermaine got here, right? I picked up some of the flat force four baits today. Um, pretty excited about the look of the bait and the profile, especially compared to the old 75. Um, you know, and of course we love the swank, especially in the newer, 66 size and then the other thing that i got new today was the juggle minnow yo jermaine do you have the juggle minnow dude is it really jermaine's birthday tomorrow morning hell yeah it's my son's two-year-old birthday the day after tomorrow 4k sungill Awesome little drop shot bait there. Jermaine, happy early birthday, dude. How over old you're going to be, don't tell us, but cheers and happy birthday. I'll just top this off and pour a fresh one because that was a little poor and it got pretty diluted. So I'm not going to do what I did on the stream the other night in uh downing a big sip like i did for rich but cheers 
Oh, you're right. Dude, Rich, you only have to stay up for another 25 minutes, yo. All right. Happy birthday, Jermaine is right. No. Jermaine's probably turning 28. Uh, I, I don't know about that, dude. I've tried that with a few different baits of the same profile. I don't like it. That's just me. Um, I don't like a super slim profile on a chatterbait. It, in my opinion, makes it too erratic almost the same as if you don't have a trailer on it in the first place. I like the drag um, that a trailer, a proper trailer produces, whether it's a more straight tail or something uh, that's going to cause the bait to lift or have more action behind it. I do like some bulk in a trailer. And uh, yeah, I've learned that kind of the hard way. You know, something along the lines of like this would probably be about as narrow as i would go right um once it gets skinnier than that and doesn't have enough weight most drop shot style baits uh, just don't have enough weight to them for me jermaine 33 what did i say 28 29 i didn't think you were 30 yet dude happy birthday man we are close to the same age all right let's get back into why we're here and uh we'll check on our cart in an, a minute or two but we've got three baits in there let's move on to say square bills what do you say i wish it would just let us we have to redo this every time uh square bill crankbaits All right, so of course it lists them, the LC 1.5, the KVD 1.5. Those are the classics, right? Yozuri makes a really good square bill. Um, that internal prism, great. Um, but the KVD 1.5 hard knock is underrated, as is the 1.0. But we're going to keep moving and... Um, there were one or two specific ones that I wanted to mention. The 1.5 deep might be one that you need to have on uh, your radar, Daniel. But this guy right here, the Jabberjaw I think Debo brought it up the other night. Um, and I even commented saying, the Jabberjaw is a legit bait. Damn it. I want to press play on them. I'm just, I've seen the act, Jabberjaw, but um, it is substantially different than what you see in the Sixth Sense Axis, which has the same exact concept of that swiveling, free swinging bill. I should say a free swinging as opposed to swiveling. Um, and it makes contact with the edges of the bait, creating a chattering type of sound and action. Um, there's a much louder clicking sound that you get out of the jabber jaw than you do with the axis. And, um, and there is a rattle inside. So in my opinion, it's just a, a, a better bait. Oh no, so whatever. We'll do a side by side comparison soon. But um, I like the Jabberjaw, and this new Jabberjaw Deep gets me excited, especially for someone like Daniel who is fishing deeper water. Um, I think getting a bait down deeper that has this type of action um, can be super, super deadly. So um, it's cool that they paint the bills on these. And um, you get a, a wide variety. In general, I think that a bait like this tends to do better in stained water. Um, but 
I've had tremendous success on a chatterbait in clear water. So I don't think that is necessarily the case. I would say to go with the green gizzard shad or this regurgitated shad, which is a super cool color and one that I don't have. And uh, I'm going to add that to the cart for you. Okay. Regurgitated shad in the deep diving jabber jaw. Okay. There was one other square bill that wanted to put in here for you. Um, it's cool that they've got the DT fat. Let me catch up on comments. Because I, I do appreciate your guys' uh, feed, but if you guys have recommendations as well um, of that, you know, you might be able to trigger my memory or, you know, remind me of something that I particularly love, but I'm going straight to kind of uh, the more obvious things to me, not the uh, one-off things per se, but I can always open up my boxes and peruse and see if there's anything I'm missing. But I do want to catch up on these comments. Why are you guys talking about Queen Tackle? I would definitely not. What? Do, what? Do, who? I don't know what you're talking about, but um, the Queen Tackle switchblades. Um, I used to think were a lot cooler than I do right now. I usually don't fiddle with them anymore. Most of the chatterbaits that I made with the Queen Tackle Switchblade, I have removed that blade, which has obviously affected the integrity of it. And um, I probably only got one or two more chances to rig it right and uh, find a jig head that I really love it on. But yeah, the Brat is a, a pretty cool square bill. Um, might be one worth looking at, but. Uh, wasn't necessarily going to be one that I threw in here, unless maybe it's this the six foot diver. Uh, JP, I don't believe so. It looks like they just kind of re released it, um, but for a while it kind of disappeared. Maybe it was a production thing. I'm not sure. <laughs> nice, Daniel. I'm happy to hear that feedback. Sweet. Yeah, Brendan, I'm thinking about it. Um, just might not be in this square bill, okay? Now, let's talk about this. I I feel weird making you um, purchase two baits from the same company in the same order. But if you have not gotten on the train that is dual hardcore, um, you need to try. Okay, because like I mentioned before, this bait has a magnetic weight transfer system. Why do they have the flash and vibe there? Um, this is a square bill with a magnetic weight transfer system in it. Um, I don't know why that makes a difference, but being able to cast that extra little bit of distance, um, can sometimes make a big difference. Um, and it's got a, a very consistent action. It's a little bit fatter of a body. And it's got some cool colors. So I'm going to go with my personal favorite color. And that is the Ghost Pearl Shad, which I think should work well in your waters. Um, allow you to have confidence in throwing it almost year round, but especially post spawn. So Brendan was recommending that I choose the Shimano Macbeth. You know, of course, we could go with the River to see Biggie. Um there are a lot of really good options when it comes to square bill crankbaits, but those are the two like main ones that come to my mind because we get a mix um, of action there, right? Um, with the dual hardcore, you get the weight transfer system and castability out of a, a bait that isn't really in its category, but then it's totally silent on the retrieve, which is unique. So stealthy but it's going to have a lot of presence in the water uh, because of how fat it is whereas the jabber jaw 
is going to be quite a bit louder and make more of a ruckus and be more of a, a hunting type of bait, but also deep diving. So um, those were my couple little ideas there. And then uh, let's see where we're at right now. I think we've only got five baits in the cart. We've got five baits in the cart and we're staying pretty clear water. Holy hell, dude. Okay. This is very clear water, right? I took that literally, but five baits and we are $53 in. So not too shabby. Uh, we're on our way. I've got a couple other ideas. Let's go to crankbait. I don't know if they label these. Dang. We're going to go with a flat-sided crankbait, Daniel. And this is where I might go with the Shimano Macbeth. So let's go ahead and uh, catch up on your comments. Macbeth casts like a bullet. Well, how about the Macbeth flat side for casting like a bullet, um, given its size? So I think that might be the ticket. Because that's a bait that I recently got in my hands and was immediately blown away by. Um, it just seems like it's it's made different. Um, I love it. Daniel has some of the, the six-foot brat. Okay. All right. Sweet. Good to know. I'm glad we didn't quite go down that route. So, let me show you um the Macbeth flat side real quick all right and there's so many good flat sided crankbaits that we could go with but i want to strike a balance um and this is where i i may or may not want your feedback daniel um as we're picking something out together okay because there are, are technically five baits that come to my mind that uh, would be good for you in this category. And I know you might not be like particularly jazzed about all five of these, but let's try to be honest about um, when you might be most likely to use a flat sided crankbait, um, whether it's in shallow or deep water. So Daniel has good success on ghost style colors. That makes me happy to hear. Okay. So while we're at it, let's go shallow to deep. All right. And we'll start with the Shimano Macbeth flat side. Okay. I believe this is 57 millimeters long. It looks absolutely gorgeous. They've got it in some cool colors. This is like a, a pro blue style color. Super flat, super original looking. And it's got a weight transfer system in it. Now it's a different style weight transfer system that's just really on a, a spring which kind of rebounds immediately after it hits the back but i have no doubt that it's effective and uh this is one of the flat sides that i am most excited to try this year so that is definitely an option and then going it staying relatively shallow is the striking chick magnet okay so this is not nearly as narrow of a bait right but it is really well made and um unlike the macbeth which is a silent bait the chick magnet has a very methodical 
knocking, ticking sound to it, and I am a fan of that. So its profile is a little bit more in line with like the Ott's Garage um, OG Slim. A um, little bit wider flat side crankbait, but has a really good action and that, that rattle that I do like. The Fritz side, this is the clicking version. I really like the clicking version, but there's something about the original, especially in some of its bigger sizes, deeper diving. This is the Fritz side nine. Take a look at this thing. Super, super thin. Like the thinnest flat side on the market. So of course it does cast a little bit like a potato chip, but this size nine weighs a full half ounce. Uh, so it doesn't actually struggle nearly as much as its little brothers to cast. This guy will go some 11 or 12 feet for you. And they make it in some really cool shad patterns like this Kentucky blue with a lot of purple hues to it. So I thought this one might be a good option for us to go with if you're wanting a deeper diver flat side crankbait. Another one in that same ballpark is this right here. This the Strike King KBD 1.5 flat. So one of the longer standing flat-sided crankbaits on the market, very consistent action. It's not a rattle so much as the weight's just shifting a little bit. Uh, this is a, a primarily silent bait, but has a very good action at a medium to deeper diving depth. So about seven to nine feet. The largest size frit side will go just a little bit deeper than that. You can see it's a skinnier bait. This is more of a classic flat side. You know, you'll notice in terms of width, more classic, more fat. So um, I was going to choose the Macbeth for you, but by all means, if you want something a little bit more deep diving in either the Fritz side nine or the KBD 1.5 flat, um, you tell me, give me a little bit of a feedback um, on those in terms of which of those couple do you want shallow or deep because if you want shallow I'm going with the Macbeth for you if you want deep um, I will make the game time decision in a second on whether to go with the Fritz side or the KBD 1.5 uh, both are great baits you just get a, a slight difference in um, how they cast and how they deflect. So, you know, if you're fishing rock primarily, I would go with the KBD 1.5. If you're fishing a little bit of a mix of cover, I would go with the Fritz side. Okay, so you want kind of one of each. Um, in that case, In that case, let's go ahead and add some to the cart. Yep. Hello, Bass. I'm with you, dude. One shallow, one deep. Yeah, I mean, that that's a fair point, but I, I don't really agree with that. I think the, the Fritz side is a little bit closer to that, uh, but that, that's a fair point to make. So... Let's go into the Macbeth, and uh, it's kind of crazy to think that we haven't added any, like, craw patterns in here or anything like that, but for the flat side, I wouldn't necessarily choose to go that route straight out of the boat. I hate to say it, but the color that suckers me in the most is Sleeper Shad. Okay. Um, keep in mind, Daniel might have a, a different idea here. And by all means, he should pick a different color if he wants to, right? Some people are just diehard sexy shad people. I am not. 
I, I never have been. Um, now, I'm a sucker for wanting to like hot mustard, but I live in Colorado. I'm not out in, you know, Tennessee or Kentucky, and I, I don't have like, that's just not a thing for me. Now, red does play sometimes, um, so I've got a lot of red, but that in the Macbeth, and then Fritz side, we're not going shallow, we're going deep. Fritz side, medium. Okay, we want the nine. Oh, man. So, dude, if you're grinding rocks, there are not a lot of brown craw patterns out there. Um, and sure, the HD brown craw is cool. Um, but I got to say, they really stepped it up with this brown craw pattern. That looks pretty nasty, and I'm super tempted to pick it for you right now. But like I said, the Kentucky blue might actually be more of the ticket with this pearl hue to it. Shad are your forage that you are chasing, so we're going to do it. Kentucky blue, I have a soft spot for uh, man, if you don't have any hybrid hunters, no, because you need the junior. Do they have the junior? Let's see if they're on it with that. Ooh. Daniel, do you throw the 3XD? This is a small bodied crankbait that dives deep and has a good action, dude. Um, loud rattles. This is one that you might want to remove from your cart later, or I might for us. But. Not talked about enough. And they've got some good, interesting color patterns. Really like the shizzle. Um, might give you a little bit less of a ghosty vibe. You know, Gizzard is so classic, but almost boring at this point, right? So that's what we'll do. Holy shnikes. Yeah, there's a lot that's sold out as well. For shizzle. They have a fire crop pattern. Image coming soon. Nice. Don't appreciate that. All right. I'm going to catch up on comments and then we'll keep moving. Uh, I, maybe we'll jump over to uh, soft plastics in a second. But let's see here. Shoo. You guys are flying at this point. I love it. I love it. All right, Matt. You, do, I don't know what you're trying to do. No one's dead walking a flat side crankbait. <laughs> you... You've been watching to and listening to a little bit too much of that DRT, dude. Nobody dead walks anything. Oh, that's so good. Guys, Heaven Hill. Look at that. Look at that. Sexy Shad is overrated. Yeah, hot take. I agree with that. Oh, yeah. I I don't crank on braid. I didn't even know that David Fritz does crank on braid. It, is that for real? Get out of here. Uh, yeah, I. you're probably guessing right, dude. Yeah. 
I agree, man. When I grabbed a couple of those HD patterns, I, I tested the durability of one on camera and just scratched it with a hook. It just, it tore that thing off. Um, was crazy. You might be right about that, but I don't necessarily think that the hybrid hunter needs to be put into a box as a grass fishing bait. Um, I, I think a lot of people did that with the chatter bait for so long. Um, and I, it makes sense when you see a lip like you do with the hybrid hunter. Um, and it's made to go over and run through grass particularly well. That's the box that you put it in. But when you consider the action and the posture that it has, um, it's shallow diving depth and the rattles involved. I think it's a very good shallow diving crankbait on riprap banks um, as well. So, uh, and I think it deflects around wood just fine as well. So I think we should keep an open mind about the hybrid hunter uh, as well as the, the swank. Is that what they call it? Yeah. You don't have a three XD. So I added that one in there. Hopefully you're okay with that. We'll see. But shizzle. Yeah. The yellow perch is a great color pattern, dude. I'm pretty sure I've got like a bunch of three XDs in here. Yeah, I've got some bandits, some bombers, some wiggle warts, and some 3XDs. Um, for me, the wiggle warts and the 3XDs play in a very similar place. So there's that yellow perch that you're talking about, dog. And it is a great color. In fact, I think I just got this like a year ago. Haven't even fished this, uh, fished it once or twice. Um, but. Yeah, I have a lot of, of 3XDs. Um, I have confidence in them. Not that I throw them as much as I should. Interesting. Never caught anything on a crank. Are you being for real about that, dude? Um, you're just probably not putting in enough time or patience, you know, it, it takes a certain patience and confidence. Um, you have to know that you're going to risk losing the bait in order to get bit, right? You have to retrieve the bait so that it's making contact with things. Uh, probably 80 to 90% of your bites will come when you're retrieving the bait through and around cover. Uh, you don't necessarily have to be burning it or uh, fishing it erratically, you know, doing anything with your rod per se. Uh, you don't need to be doing a stop and go, but you might want to just switch up your retrieve speed. You might want to make sure that you're making contact with cover and uh, maybe lighten up your line. I don't know, dude, that sucks. Hey, is it Jermaine's birthday? Well, Rich, thanks for stopping by, dude. Appreciate you. Um, Jermaine, if you're still awake, happy, happy birthday. Hope you're getting uh, a special treat right now as you're going to bed. Uh, that would be the best way to start a birthday, right? Um, sorry, I'll get my mind out of the gutter. Brendan might be watching. Hopefully he's not. Uh, most people here are of legal age, but you know, there's no legal age. Um, just kidding. Brendan's 18. He's legal. I'm sorry that that got weird real fast. Um, <laughs> Carl likes it. Brendan is legal indeed. Um, poor Brendan. Maybe he won't rewatch this. All right. Um, so Daniel said he wanted about a hundred lipless crankbaits. Just kidding. He wants no lipless crankbaits in this order. So, um, 
let's double check where we are dollar wise and then i might, might want to add one other crankbait in here all right check this out we got the crossover in the ghost threadfin shad dual hardcore minnow flat in the 95 in the ghost pro blue color lucky craft lightning pointer 100 in the aurora or lightning pointer 110 sp in the aurora black 13 fishing jabber jaw deep in the regurgitated shad dual hardcore 65 sr square bill now maybe they make an mr if you want to get the mr by all means do that but my logic was jabber jaw deep and shallow crankbait um but you could go the opposite way, right? Like I have some of the KVD 1.5 deep square bills. Um, there's a time and a place for that, but I find myself throwing the 1.5 flat more than I do uh, a deep diving square bill. Usually if I'm throwing a square bill, I'm banging it around up shallow, uh, not as much in deep water. But if that suits your waters better, you could certainly flip flop these and go with the jabber jaw regular, the shallow version with that more erratic shallow action and then if you want a deeper silent version by all means you could go with um you know the dual hardcore mr i think they make and then flat sides we went with the Macbeth in the sleeper shed and the frit side in the kentucky blue in the size nine so the size nine dives deep upwards of 10 or 11 feet the Macbeth probably only five or six feet, depending on the line that you're using. And the 3XD in the shizzle, going to be a little bit more of a knocker style rattle. Did I shake those for you a second ago? The frit side is quiet. In fact, I've got all three of these baits sitting right here for you. Of course, the shizzle is a color pattern I don't have. So here's a perch pattern. Perch 3XD. Pretty loud rattle in the 3XD. Guess what? When we go to the Fritz side 9, ow. Fusion 19 hooks are good. Frit side. Very quiet. It's just those weights shifting around. And then we go to the Macbeth. And same deal. You hear nothing in that one. So uh, three totally different baits that you get there as well as that deep diving jabber jaw, which I think should be good. Um, <laughs> get out of here, Matt. We're not putting a Shimano Arma joint in there. Um, in fact, we're, we're not really trying to double down on any brands, but the dual hardcore, I almost couldn't help it. Um, strictly because of that weight transfer system it's just it's so good um tim maynard in the house what's up dude adam does he need a wiggle wart maybe if he does i can give him one um as you saw i've got too many um you know these these are just like my cross style wiggle warts in fact this this whole box might pretty much be cross style deep diving crankbaits. You know, I do have a couple shad patterns of those three XDs in there, but that box is getting a little bit out of control. Yeah, Tim, that's what we're doing tonight. On behalf of Daniel T in the house, Daniel, I appreciate that. Yeah, no worries. 
Uh, Adam, what what are you referring to? They make a lot of 3D baits uh, at Yozuri, so I don't know. Mm. Tim says that Fritz side nine only catches big fish. Um, yeah, I'll I'll say that I haven't caught a ton of fish on it because I've thrown the Fritz side seven and then the Fritz side five so much more. The Fritz side five is just much more up my alley, but I do have a few of the nine and a few of the five, and if and when I've got the proper place to throw them. Um, this is a bait that I, I pretty much have confidence in straight out of the pack. Um, you know, it is really well built, such a thin bait. Of course you can manipulate this bill however you want. You could round that off if you want, but the weight in the bill is very interesting. And those protruding weights down below are interesting. Um, it's a very good bait. I'm with you, Tim, and I am just encouraging Daniel to get one and put some time into it. All right, so, oh, I meant to share my screen. Let's keep moving. Um, you know, we've got rattle, no, 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 not really. Okay, so maybe we need a little bit of a rattle in here. Um, I thought we had a little bit more action going on. Maybe I was wrong about that. And, uh, huh. Let's see. <laughs> I can't help it. I got to take a peek. Shall we peek or shall we shop? Because I was wanting to, to get like a, a DT6 or a DT8. But that's that's a silent bait, dude. Um, I almost think a smart move. Um, all right, I've got two ideas for you. And I'll, I'll add them both in, all right? So first we're going to go with the Berkeley Dredger. This is a... Uh, Middle of the road, medium diving crankbait. And I say middle of the road in terms of its action. Um, I really like its action. And the cool thing is they make it in small, not so deep diving versions and big and very deep diving versions. So um, if you're intrigued by this bait and you want to get it in a very deep diving version, then by all means, you should. Um, it's just, it's hard for me to say, you told me that your, your bodies of water get what, 25 feet deep, but how often are you fishing for fish that are hugging the bottom, um, in 25 feet, you know, let's be honest. I, I think for me, I'm rarely going, uh, beyond the dredger 14.5. I throw the dredger eight and a half and ten and a half a lot, and I've got confidence in them. But I don't fish super deep water. But check this out: the twenty-five and a half goes to twenty-six feet deep. Um, that's crazy. So what if we pick something in the middle in that say fourteen point five range uh, um, that might suit needs? You know, the ghost morning dawn is a cool color, but I really think something along the lines of a green shad, which is like a uh, you know green gizzard shad, or chameleon pearl, are uh, some 
awesome colors. It's uh, I might show you in a second after I pee. Oh, the stone cold. You got to have it. Why do they got to add all these cool new colors? Stunna Shad, Vanilla Chartreuse, Stone Cold. Oh. I'm going to do it. And I'm going to go pee. While you guys talk about this. Sorry. Got to pee. Oh, all right. I do want to catch up on the comments because who knows if Daniel, I'm muted, of course. All right. No DT8, says Brendan. Daniel, I kind of figured that. That's why I didn't pick them. So. Good to know, Tim. I did not really know that, but um, now that I think about it, that makes perfect sense. Okay, so you got the HD. Um, now, I think maybe the 14.5 is a good middle ground where you'll still be able to make contact in 10 to 15 feet of water. Um, a, a relatively deep diving crankbait, but what's cool about the dredger, it's a small bodied crankbait that is pretty loud, uh, for what it is. So, uh, shite, I don't think I have that box handy on me, um, to be able to show you, but. Maybe, maybe I do. No, these are all super shallow. Um, these are like square bills. Um, I'm get, I'm my boxes are getting out of hand. But I thought you might like the dredger. If you don't, it's all good. Um. Yozuri 3DS flat crank. I am not familiar with that one. Discount tackle doesn't carry it, so um, interesting. Yeah, I, I I'm not familiar with that bait. All right, let's get back into it. Let's jump over. We did add this one in, right? The stone cold in 14.5 so two and a half inches is a very standard size um round bill crankbait it's got that frosted lip and that frosted color pattern like a matte shad type of pattern it's super cool uh but you'll notice that the smaller sizes are actually like really small body crankbaits that still dive in that seven to ten foot range um so i thought maybe you'd like the middle sized dredger and uh 
let's see if there was another one in here that was really speaking my mind. See the the Spro Rock Crawlers and the Little Johns were ones that uh, I did maybe want to throw in. I think the Little John is more the deal, but they're both awesome baits, if we're being honest. Uh, the cool thing about the Little John is that we can probe all depths of the water column. So I throw the more shallow and medium diving Little Johns, but check this out. They make a deep diving 60 and a deep diving 45. I mean, Obviously, I wouldn't recommend the 45, but check out this 60 deep, deep diver. This thing dives 9 to 12 feet, and, and it's silent, and it's flat. Okay, so um, what do we already have in here that's close to that range? We've got, yeah really all all three of these we've got silent we've got louder and we've got a slightly higher pitch so i think we're good on on those right now uh we're at 91 dollars. okay so let's let's move over to soft plastics for a second and wow all soft plastics i don't know about that that's going to give us too many options. So let's narrow that down. Narrow down by type. So we can go with soft body swim baits. Because there may or may not have been a recommendation made by Daniel for a specific soft body swim bait. Um, Or just a break uh, that I know the one he's talking about. So we're going to go find it. And this is to be paired on a specific jig head. So there are, are two baits that we're looking for here. The, the first is actually on page one. And it is the Mega Bass Spark Shad in the three inch. Okay. This is a, a very classic bait right here. Paired on sheer screw head. I've removed the eye on one side. The three inch spark shad is a very stable swimming, very solid bait. Um, even in the three inch. However, it kind of depends on what you're looking to do with the bait. Um, that is a good option, but not always the best option. So uh, we will keep this in the back of our minds, knowing that the lemon shad and the silver shad are all that are available in the three inch right now. The silver shad is the one that I would choose uh, it is a very classic and good one to have. But let's try and find the other bait that we were looking for when we first got here, okay? The Easy Shiner is a really good one. But that is not the one we're looking for. If we have to keep looking for too long, we're going to search by name because I don't want to have to mention every one of these baits but like oh gosh this this one was one that even today at Shields I was tempted by okay not this color pattern um, and even not this size but the four inch in color they don't even have it listed here. Okay. That makes 
me feel a little bit better. Um, but the Big Bite Bait Suicide Shad. Awesome bait on the back of a buzz bait. Um, also just rigged by itself. So the Hazadong Shad is the one that we're looking for, as is maybe the Jackal Rhythm Wave. Okay. So, Daniel, tell me if you've used the Mega Bass Hazadong Shad or not. I know that you've tried some of the Jackal baits like the Jackal uh, Rhythm Wag, right? Wasn't it you that has not only tried those recently, but had some good success on them? Um, that's like really exciting news to me to hear that uh, one of you guys is trying these baits, but the Rhythm Wag, not the Rhythm Wave. Whereas I think the Rhythm Wave on the back of an Okashira Screwhead could be awesome. Uh, this is like 4.5, 5.5. That's not right. 4.8 and 5.8. So let's move on to find the Hazardong Shad in the 3 inch if we can. They don't just hurry it up. I'm going to do it because they're going to distract us and find us a different bait that we don't want, right? Ease dong. Three inch. Oh, totally sold out. That's weird. Um, so we can ignore that. Um, let me try and think of. Daniel, why don't you tell me, because I, I want to throw the Easy Shiner in there. That's like my default, but have you tried that? And have you tried the Spark Shad in the 3-inch? If you haven't tried the Spark Shad, I'm going to recommend that, right? Because that paired up with like that color that we talked about. Oh, this isn't... I mean, this pairing works perfect, but... Um, they make that black and white paired with the black and white that just goes oh so well. Um, I would say as well as this pairing does. Which you can see why I removed the eye on that side. Whereas maybe you're into that four eyes look. Or maybe you're not. But the three inch spark shad is like my go to on that head because of its stability. Um, the fins, the way that the, the weight is distributed, that's kind of my, my go to deal. But, um, dude, you haven't used the rhythm wave, the hazardong shad, or the spark shad. All right. So then maybe that's where we need to go. I mean, you didn't even mention the easy shiner, but uh, whatever. Let's let's forget about those for a second, okay? Because, oh, pfft. Brendan says the spark shot and the mag draft are similar. That's, that's uh, not true, okay? Yeah, I like the whale in general. Um, I think it's a good bait. I uh, I am curious to try the baby whale just like you tried. You know, the original whale is like four and a half inches, but really well-designed bait. You can see I've rigged that a handful of times, but... The whale is a good soft plastic. Good for somewhat in the medium speed retrieve. Uh, that might be the only reason that I would compare it to a mag draft. That's about it. <laughs> Sorry, you were not comparing it. 
Brendan was comparing the spark shad to the mag draft. Um, yeah. The screw hat screw heads you have are in the shad or the real minnow. Okay. That doesn't mean much to me, but let's, let's not worry about the pairing of the colors. Okay. Okay. That that's fair. And you're going to notice that when I send you the seven inch spark shad is that it more than the five starts to blend the profile, the, that shape of the head and how it tapers to the body is a little bit more mag drafty than the spark shad. You know, if you step up from the five inch spark shad, which has the exact same profile as the four and the three, and you step up to the seven, it's different. All right. And it is borderline in between the spark shad and the mag draft. So you will see that shortly. I'm so sorry for taking months and months to send you the blank of it. But uh, I can show you again once on stream right now. Can I? I mean, I've got them right here. I can even show you like the most extreme example. I'm not going to pull out the eight, eight inch mag draft, but here's the six inch mag draft. Okay. Here is the seven inch spark shed. You'll notice that these baits are not the same. Obviously, the spark shad is, is wider. But check this out. When I stand these up, you'll notice that the tail of the mag draft has a, a subtle wag to it. That spark shad just bends over. But from a profile standpoint, as you step up from the 5 inch to the 7 inch in this spark shad, it becomes a little bit more mag drafty, just less speed sensitive than the mag draft itself, which to me is a huge drawing point. Uh, a big reason that I'm interested in the 7 inch spark shad and why I originally said absolutely. I would love to send you one uh, for you to be able to mold it yourself, okay? And hopefully send me a pack of them as well after you mold it. So, Daniel, let's let's move on. I'm sorry, dude. Um, let's pick out some of these soft plastics for you, okay? So, the Spark Shad, if you're wanting to throw on an Oka Shira Screw head, I think the spark shad three inch is the way to go. But if you want a hazard on um, just to throw by itself, it's a different ball game, right? Let, let's go into the rhythm wave for a second because I think this bait matches really well on um, if it's a 2.8. Why? There's only one size in the 2.8, and it's the hollow black. So everything else is sold out right now. That's weird. Uh, um, Got to apologize for that. Not that I work at Discount Tackle or anything like that, but it's unfortunate. See, I, I like this, and this is part of why I wanted to do this tonight, is that you can see my train of thought as we are actually scrolling through all of the different soft plastic swim baits offered on, on here. Um, I You know, literally I'm thinking, trash, meh, meh, don't throw it. Would throw it, but it's too late to the game. Nope. Meh, nope. 
Um, not my style. Nope. Nope. Not my style, but a lot of people throw this style bait. Nope. Nope. Yup, but don't have it. No, got it for free. Have tried it before. Yup. Yup. Surprisingly, yup. Uh, all right. I'm not going to go through all these like that. Sorry. Because uh, there's a lot of nopes in here. A lot of nopes. And we're getting into sold out territory. So that's uh, weird and unfortunate to see that if you were to look at a category, as you get onto the later pages, they are sold out. So um, the, the three inch Z-Man Minnows is one that I talk about frequently and speak very highly of. The Kitex Swing Impact Fat 2.8 is a rock solid one. 2.8 inch Kitex Easy Shiner is good for this application, although the three inch is slightly better. Um, that three inch at $5 a pack and the Spark Shad at $6 a, or $7 a pack they're very comparable, okay? Um, you're just going to get a little bit more of like a square bill versus a flat side type of action out of the spark shad versus the hazardong shad or uh, the easy shiner, if you will. So you can go with the silver shad in the three inch, but I think... Right now, given the selection and given the action that we're looking for, the better situation might be going with the Kitek 3-inch Easy Shiner. That is not. That's Z-Man. That's a good bait, but not what we're looking for right now. That was the Slim Swims from Z-Man. This right here is the Kitek Easy Shiner in the 3-inch. And this is where I'm going to look at Daniel's old comment. The screw heads are in the Shad or real minnow? So let's take a look at that. If we can. Oh, what the hey. I guess we'll... Screw. Head. Spawn kill. Real minnow is white. With a little green head. And shad is white with a blue head. All right. That's useful. Daniel likes the natural stuff. I can appreciate that. Oh, dude. I mean, it's... These baits... Look. Look. Guys. There's too many good color options. Sungill sold out. Super Shad sold out. Threadfin. Whatever. They're all great colors. Once we get up into what's available... Tennessee Shad, so classic. But if Daniel has the green back, the sight green hologram is a new color pattern to Kitek, and it's got that, like, I don't know, uh, electric shad glitter in it. Same with this sight blue ghost. So I'm going to let you figure out which color you've got, whether it's green or blue, and you're going to go with sight green hologram or sight blue ghost to pick your color. And 
straight up, that's what it's going to be because these are the new colors and they match your heads perfect. So we're going to go with the Sight Blue Ghost, assuming that you've got that, that natural like uh, blue shad pattern. But if you have the green, go with the Sight Green Hologram, okay? And then lastly, I think there was one other uh, soft plastic that we were going to get, weren't we? Brendan says, once I make the molds of the spark shad, I will change the plastic. Okay. I don't know what you mean by that, but I'm excited. Please do change the plastic. Have at it and send me one. Send me a bunch. Yeah. <laughs> do it, dude. You know what? I'm sick of you guys giving me a hard time, all right? I, I send it as much as I can. If I were your guys' age, if I was 18, like Brendan, if I was 20, zero, like Matt, who knows how old Matt is. But, um, you know, if I had the life that, that you guys do, not that I envy your life, um, but if I had time, I'd be sending every one of these baits. But the point is, I can't stop consuming and collecting baits to the point where, you know, I, I get something, I try it, and I either hit the jackpot or I don't. I either decide that I've got a lot of confidence in it or I don't. That's like for the for the most part, that's what happens these days because... I'm not buying very little and going out and fishing this one bait in every scenario until I know exactly when and where it works. Like it's unfortunate, right? But also a good problem to have that, you know, now I've got a handful of the, the Jackal TN 80 lipless crankbait. Uh, where am I going to use these mostly? I don't know. In lieu of an LV500, maybe. This is a massive lipless crankbait. Am I going to throw this a lot this year? No. Am I going to throw it a couple times? Yeah, probably. I hope so, right? I mean, that that's the reason that I buy most of these things is that I'm hoping, I believe when I buy them, that there's a time and a place that I'm going to pick it up and use it but the reality is this is a collecting game and we don't all get out as much as we want and uh, we're not all given the conditions that we want to have. Brendan, you mentioned the Berkeley uh, spinner baits recently and Matt mentioned something about this guy. This is the Berkeley Dex spinner bait. Check this out. Very thin wire. Super thin wire. Berkeley Dex. High quality spinnerbait. I know that you were dogging on Berkeley spinnerbaits, but not all around the world necessarily. Oh, Daniel, if you haven't tried the Easy Shiner, then we're going to leave that one in there, okay? Adam's eager to go to bed. All right, well, so be it. It is about time to go to bed, so no problem. Um, pro Blue on that? I don't know about that. Bruce is going to be 47 on the 18th. Happy early birthday, dude. That's awesome. Yeah, you're right, Tim. It is. Uh, it's not a not a local bait. Not easy to find. It's not a um, U.S. domestic market bait. But <clears throat> I've got 
one or two other things that I think I wanted to add in here. And these were per Brendan's recommendation, okay? He wanted some frogs. Should we throw some uh, frogs in there? These are frog hooks. That, that's not what we were looking to do. Soft baits. There's so many different categories. What's going on here? All right. We don't need to fiddle around. The Z-Man Goat Toads is a bait that I think we need to talk about. Um, I just recently unboxed the uh, Zoom Uni Toad, and I'm super pumped about that bait to be on the market and readily available, although I don't necessarily see it as a traditional toad-style bait. I know that it's meant to have a different action for the same type of presentation and be a, uh, a topwater, you know, waking-style toad, which is unique, and I think that's cool, but... This is a toad, and, you know, Daniel did mention it. So, clear water. I have a couple of different suggestions. Either black, purple death, or the deal. Um, and I'm going to go with purple death. I have a soft spot for this color. If you change your mind and you want to go red bone and go supernatural, by all means, do that, right? But purple death, I really do like. Um, I have that, that color pattern. Um, you and I can talk hooks offline. Okay. So let's talk hooks offline and then let's look at a frog or two and call it good because sadly I'm about to pee again and I'm like, Oh, do I have a bottle to pee in? No, I have an empty Heaven Hill bottle that I could pee in. That's unbelievable. Do I literally have the same bottle empty? Am I going to try and pee into this respectable Heaven Hill bottle right now? With a small top? This is a disaster, guys. But we're doing it. Uh oh. Guys, this is like dumb, dumber stuff here. Well, we only filled that up about three, 350 mils. <laughs> I just peed again. Sorry about it. Uh, yeah, peeing on stream. That's exactly what I did. Dude, <laughs> JP, uh, you're not the first one that said that. I have uh, had people say that I need to get a, a bag of some sort and pee on stream. But sometimes that happens, you know. Daniel, I'm not getting wasted. Don't worry about it. We're going to be out of here soon. <laughs> we'll finish the uh, the shopping spree shortly here, okay? You're right, Matt. Maybe it should be VIP. I, I could uh, show you guys the contents of what I just filled up approximately half of a whiskey bottle here you know and it i'm so embarrassed that it has to be such a classy bottle like this i have an empty of this from a couple of months back 
it was one of the few empties that I had down here in the basement. And I filled it like to here with pee just now. That sucks. I'm I'm a little embarrassed. But Okay, we're moving on. Add a breath bluegill jackhammer with geek crack bellows gill trailer. Um, dude, I don't throw a bellows gill as a trailer on a jackhammer, but that's an interesting thought. Um, I don't see myself doing that. That's two different techniques. Um, for me, at least if I'm throwing a bellows gill as a jig trailer, I'm throwing a slow moving jig. Uh, the bellows gill for me is a slow moving bait. That's just me. And yeah, you're right, Matt. RIP Heaven Hill, because as delicious and amazing as this bourbon is, and I don't know what it costs, you know, 80, maybe 100 bucks a bottle, um, which seems silly, right? I just cracked this tonight. Um, this will be gone in three or four days. Um, I did just pee in an empty bottle of this bourbon. And here I am swirling this, acting classy. No, so unclassy that I just peed in that empty bottle. Brendan, you need not worry about that. Thank God. Um, my pee actually looks pretty clear right now. All right, so. Let's get back on the discount tackle. Did, we added this goat toads in here. How about a frog? I, this is way out of season. All right. But Daniel requested it. Um, Man. I haven't been in my frog box in a while. Daniel. Ooh. Man. Daniel, you you've got me wanting to get into my frog box, dude. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm tempted to send you a frog instead of buy you a frog or make you buy a frog. All right. Um, actually, we talked about this recently. Uh, maybe on the last stream, it's the Kitech noisy flapper. This bait is not on sale at discount tackle, but is so worth it. If you don't throw this, you need to. Okay. Now I will leave it up to you to choose your color, Daniel, because I'm sure that you throw a buzz bait and you throw a top water uh, buzzing style frog. So if you throw a buzz frog, maybe a, a green pumpkin frog style color is more appropriate. But if you're going to throw this as a trailer, maybe you want to go straight black or straight white. Now, you say you're fishing in clear water. So I'm going to go straight black for you. Uh, that's just one of those colors that I don't care what water clarity you're dealing with. The silhouette of straight black just does the trick. So um, let's see if we can find a piece of terminal tackle that works well with those two hooks. But before we do, we've got 11, 12 baits in the, in the cart. $107. We are not far, okay? We've got the Evergreen International Crossover in Ghost Threadfin Shad. Dual Hardcore Minnow 95 SP in the uh, Ghost Pro Blue. Lucky Craft Pointer 110 in the Aurora Black. 13 Fishing Jabber Jaw Deep in the Regurgitated Shad. The Dual Hardcore 65 um, Square Bill and the Ghost Pearl Shad. 
Shimano Macbeth, 57 flat in the sleeper shad. Berkeley Fritz side, 9 in the Kentucky Blue. Strike King, 3XD in the Shizzle. Berkeley Dredger, 14.5 in the Stone Cold. Those are both like relatively similar baits. Both medium diving slash deep diving, small bodied crankbaits that have a little bit of a rattle in them, but both are different. I like them both. Kitech Easy Shiner in the three inch to match on a little Okashira screw head type of head. Z Man Goat in the purple death, and the Kitech Noisy Flapper in a black. Okay, you get a slightly different deal out of both of these. The Z-Man Goat is going to be a topwater toad, bit more natural, um, bit more attractive, and a, a bait that you're going to fish fast, right? A bait that you're maybe going to skip and buzz over the top of the surface or fish uh, topwater at nighttime for more aggressive fish right in clear water whereas the noisy flapper you're going to throw on a buzz bait to really really slow down or throw equally on a weighted or weightless um ewg style hook like an owner beast four aught um or just any old ewg in a four aught right uh, is typically the right size for the noisy flapper, but a single hook on that um, is usually my go-to. But the noisy flapper does do well with a double hook. Okay, I'll show you guys one time right now because I think at one hundred and seven dollars, we're gonna we're gonna call it good right there. Yeah, I'm with you, Daniel. We're going over 100, but I'm, I'm not going to go further than that right now, okay? Um, so let me show you the Crazy Flapper. Now, you wouldn't necessarily know this unless you throw a lot of Kitech baits or you read about Kitech baits, but... They do a dual density soft plastic, not just dual colors, but dual density. So this bait will always right itself and swim upright as opposed to upside down. So that's useful. Plus, the shape of it is designed to do that, right? You can tell that this has a chin that is face down it wants to ride like this now once you rig it through the middle of the bait right down that section comes up in the middle and you've got an entire spot to just rest your hook right but if you so chose to rig this on the back of a jig, check this out. All of a sudden, you're left with a pretty decent craw action with a very aggressive but tight action, right? There's not a lot of variation. These claws stop here, right? So it's different than what you get out of a, like a rage craw where you get a whole lot of swing. This just has this, right? Bop, bop, bop. Not the entire thing swinging. So a little bit tighter of an action, but you still get that very pronounced action of those kickers. And... In addition to what I was just going to say, not only can you throw this on a three or four or five aught hook and get away with it, but you can throw this on a double frog hook and it will sit 
right around these two ridges and tuck into the edges where these guys are raised, it will tuck in there, okay? So this bait takes a double frog hook better than I think any other soft plastic toad on the market. You know, the striking rage toad is probably the closest to it, but it doesn't take the hook as well. Straight up. So um, the noisy flapper would be the next one for me. And I'm sorry that I'm way behind on the comments. Let me try and catch up and then we'll sign out of here shortly. I forget what Brendan was saying. The ribbit toad. All right. Sorry, Brendan. I was just figuring out what your comment was about the spinner baits. Yeah, we're not talking about spinner baits right now. So no big deal. Yeah, I hope Daniel likes them, dude. You know, we we put a little bit of time into this tonight. A couple of hours at least, right? And I would say we picked a pretty good cart. So, you know, if Daniel were to purchase this, and unbox them live, uh, I think he would be pretty excited. At least I would be. Okay, Carl, go ahead. What, what's your question? On those soft ones, would you recommend double frog hook or a single one? It depends on the bait is what I was saying. So for most of them, a single. I would go uh, with a 4 odd weighted owner beast hook most of the time uh, so that it's got this screw lock in it and then somewhere in the ballpark of a quarter ounce or three ounce weighted um, keel weighted hook okay that that is my preferred way to fish those baits but by all means you can get away with the double hook stanley makes the uh double take hook it has a little bit of weight on it, okay? So built into the shank of the hook is a little bit of built-in weight, but um, there are very few baits that take a double style hook and remain durable. And that is one of my main criticisms of the Z-Man Goat Toads is that it doesn't take a double hook well because the back of the bait where it um where it attaches to the bait right let's take a look at this i'll show you okay so you've got body 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 super thick right and then all of this tail section is really thin so it Double hook will take really well into the nose and then it'll come out like back here, which is too thin for the bait, unfortunately. So as you'll notice about the, the bottom of the bait, that this guy is split wide open. It wants to take something along the lines of an owner beast four aught, whereas the, uh, Shoot, I don't think this is on here. No. I want to show you guys, though. I can't help it. I got to show you. I'm going to show you. So 
So take a look at the uh, the Savage Gear uh, 3D. Whoa. Okay. So this is the Savage Gear uh, Duratech Toads. You notice they they provide this hook with a whole bunch of UV resin built into this EWG style. I don't love that, um, especially because what you don't see here is that the nose of this bait is built really thin right in here. So you rig this EWG here, pop out the chin, and then it comes out the back, right? But the chin is so thinly rigged that it blows out so easily. And uh, that is a huge problem on this bait. So I got to say, I'm a little bit disappointed that that was the case with this Savage Gear 3D or Savage Gear Duratec Toad because it looked like a really good bait. But the Z-Man toads is a lot better straight up brendan no worries i'm out of here too <laughs> you're going back to cleaning up well have a great rest of your night dude thank you so much for hanging out appreciate you um so daniel t let's let's go back to what we're working with and let's sign out of here okay because uh discount tackle can we get there we can we're back in now daniel if there's anything that you feel like is missing Based on our conversations, you let me know, okay? The Evergreen crossover was Daniel's number one. Based on his conditions, I said the Ghost Threadfin Shad, although my number two choice would be this Cold Shad. Even though I have the Flash Hasu, right? I don't know. This Cold Shad is just so natural. This is one of those, um, a lot of hues going on. That depending on the the color of water that you're fishing, this is a fantastic option. With that pink stripe on the side, that yellow or that orange belly, and then it's got some color change on the side. That's a great bait. And then we've got a couple of jerk baits, shallow and deep, quiet and loud, a couple of square bells. Deep and shallow, loud and quiet, or more aggressive and standard. A couple of flat side crankbaits. And we've got a shallow quiet and a deep quiet. A little bit different uh, color patterns. Some deep diving crankbaits in more rattling versions, but still shad patterns. Um, the Kitech Easy Shiner 3-inch in a green color pattern to go on that um, Okashira screw head that you have. But if it's blue, by all means, go blue. And then a couple of my absolute favorite toads on the market being the Z-Man Goat Toads and the Kitek Noisy Flapper. So um, I got to say, this cart, for what it is, for the dollar amount, $107, I'm very excited about. I hope that Daniel feels the same way. This has been a super fun live stream. I've, I've never done anything like this in someone telling me um, how much money they're willing to spend and to ask me so kindly what to get for them. So we spent two hours shopping around, right? I spent a little bit of time before that. Do we all spend three hours per package shopping? Some of us, yes, for sure. 
Some of us know not that long. Depends on what we want, what we're looking for, right? But Daniel, thank you so much for trusting me um, in in adding these things to your cart. I am going to um, I'll I'll stay logged in for now, but by all means, I think you should be able to log in and check out at any point. Okay, so thank you so much, um, dude. The the three X over fives. Wait, 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 wait. Don't know. Don't choose between the three XDs and the X over from Evergreen. Okay, those are two totally different baits. Um, so if you're thinking about between the two, don't. Just get rid of like the three XD. The the Evergreen crossover is your top bait right? That is what you wanted more than anything. So you get that. Um, I, I definitely recommend that, but yeah, the colors, the colors, the three colors, um, right. I have the flash Hasu. The cold shed is the one that I think is like the best all around color. So kind of a tough decision on that one and why don't we get everyone's vote on that real quick i didn't pick the cold chat on that one holy shnikes i thought i did okay so i picked ghost threadfin chat everybody who's in here right now please weigh in because i know you guys have been dropping off like flies the last couple of minutes. Um, we have four colors here that we're looking at. We know that Daniel T fishes clear water with shad as his primary source of forage. We know that the evergreen crossover only goes to five feet, but is a crossover style bait. Crankbait slash jerk bait. It is a highly flash and roll style bait so ultimately that is why i chose the gross threadfin shad color is that you get a little bit of a mix with all of those right you get kind of a a flash out of some of this flake but you get that natural ghost threadfin shad color pattern the flash hasu is going to give a lot more flash on the sides um there's a lot more metallic nature in this with that chartreuse belly as well the cold shed on the other hand has just a little hint of orange on the throat but is a very natural shad pattern with some hues in there um and i i don't know that might be my favorite one the cold shad but I don't think you can go wrong with them. Ultimately, I personally chose the Flash Hasu. Tonight, I've got Daniel with the Ghost Redfin Shad. And right this second, I'm saying the Cold Shad's the best. So do I have any idea what I'm talking about? No, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, optimistic, that's rude. All right. Or are you saying that that's to Daniel? Um, I do fish and catch fish on a crankbait pretty frequently. But hey, look at you uh, donating $2 to the stream. I appreciate you, dude. Um, but I do throw crankbaits, uh, whether or not you believe that. So, Carl likes the first one. And yes, I get teased often. Um, it's because I've got so many different baits, right? I, I can show you baits at any given time and some of them are going to look fish and some of them are not going to look fish. You know, it, you got to do what you got to do, right? Some people buy baits and they just fish them straight out of the pack until they're beat up or until they're sick of the bait or otherwise, right? I often buy baits because I have confidence in it before I throw it. 
and then I don't end up throwing it, right? Or I don't have the situation to throw it just yet. So it happens for sure. Um, I don't know. Probably a third of the baits that I have. Um, I don't know. Maybe a quarter of the baits that I have are ones that I have purchased and not thrown. And then there's the whole spectrum between that, like a quarter of which I've thrown and either not been bit or been bit once or twice. And then a middle ground in between there and then some that just get destroyed. Right. I mean, it's there's a full spectrum for all of us. Right. It just depends on how big your collection is and how you choose to use those baits. But. Oh, interesting. I, you know, honestly, I just figured the same was true for everyone, but I, I don't watch a lot of other people. You know, you might see me on, um, on Debo's streams or one or two other people just jumping in here and there uh, to say what's up, but not very often. Well, you know, I think we're all kind of, in somewhat of a similar boat in that we are fishing addicts right um like i i just bought this bait the other night this norman speed end jr because i'm curious about it i haven't seen it elsewhere um let alone on sale recently so i decided to buy it and then this bait I talked about a couple times last year. I'm going to talk about a couple more times this year. And you guys definitely need to try it. This is the poo bait. The depths cover scat. You got to try it. All right, Daniel, I will hook you up with hooks. Um, I don't, I don't know the best. Okay, fine. <laughs> let's, let's grab you a hook. Um, because I still think that the best hook now I hope they carry them because if they don't I'm gonna have to just send some to you but uh what? So discount tackle might not carry them, but Daniel, I, I will reach out to you. Um, I think you either need to get some screw lock hooks, which are a challenge, right? To use elastic, elastic and push the screw lock into the bait, squeeze the bait and twist that screw lock in to get it to catch. Then you can let go and it, it will stay stuck in there. Then you can just pinch, squeeze, pinch, squeeze, and it will come in. No problem. Or you could use a Mustad grip pin style EWG hook and that keeper will grab very easily. So that is the, the main recommendations that I have with hooks. But guys, I am going to... Dip out of here. It's been super fun. It is 1120 my time. We've been on here for a little over two hours. Thank you so much for hanging out. Daniel T, thank you so much for the video idea. I hope you purchase a, a big portion of what is in your cart right now. But regardless, it is your cart to be had. Um, guys, this is a rare thing that I've never done for anybody. And I don't know how many times I'm going to do it again. But thank you, Daniel. Um, very cool idea. I've, I've talked about this kind of thing before where, you know, I want to pick out maybe a, um, a list of the month or of the season for you guys to purchase yourselves from Discount Tackle, whether you want to buy the whole thing or a portion of it and in the colors or sizes that you want. But this is the first time that I've taken um, a request from somebody given what 
and where they fish and uh, decided to help purchase what I would get. So thank you for the idea, Daniel. Um, no problem. You're getting it all. Well, I appreciate it. Um, hope you have a great rest of your night. Uh, Tim, thank you for stopping by. Appreciate you. Carl, appreciate you. Have a great rest of your night, everybody. Enjoy your Sunday night and have a great week. I'll see you soon. Bye.